Let's talk a little bit about power. Um, in body shops, uh, a lot of guys will take a long extension cord and plug it in to these. Uh, the problem is, is that the power, uh, is, when you have a long extension cord, will lose some of its amperage. So, you know, try to keep it as uh, short as possible to a source. Uh, you might have to change your wires. Uh, we recommend a number four or number six, depending on the length of the run. Um, you might have to go to two if, if it's a real long run. Um, these are all three phase machines. Uh, most of your machines uh, on the market today are all three phase. There are some battery operated ones, um, but that's uh, where we're going with these machines. So if you're going to uh, put a machine like this in your facility, make sure you have an adequate power. One other thing though, I want to talk about is that we have two different types of guns. This here particular model is a C gun. This here over here is a trans gun. This here is uh, ProSpot i5. This is a later version. The difference is, is that the transformer to make this get the power is inside this machine. The power for the trans gun is in the gun itself. So those guns are a lot larger and a little bit hip bulkier. That's why you need to use that balancer up there. When you're working around a vehicle, these cables here on the C guns produce a lot of uh, electromagnetic waves. As you noticed when I was welding, you saw these things jumping. So watch this cable when I hit the thing. You saw that cable move. You have a lot of electricity. So when you're working on around a car, the first thing you want to make sure that there's no computers within about 15 inches of where you're going to be welding. The next thing is very important is that you lay this cable so it is perpendicular to the car. So your, elect your electromagnetic waves are going in this direction instead of this one and possibly next to a computer that you might hit, uh, cause a blowout on. Another rule is that you want to uh, isolate the vehicle so you want to take the negative off the uh, battery. Remember that well, once you do that, you're going to have to um, do a scan when you're finished with today's late model vehicles for ADAS. Uh, I gave you a, an overview uh, of using the squeeze type resistant spot welders. Um, again, you're not going to learn how to use this piece of equipment in a, you know, a short little video. It's just a quick overview as you're walking through your shop as an owner or manager to look at the vehicles. You can look at the test, how to do it, make sure we're doing that. Where do you get training? ICAR has a couple classes. They have what is known as the WCS04, which is our squeeze type resistance spot well with theory class. And now they have a hands-on uh, class that deals with weld bonding, uh, primers, shunt pliers, all of the stuff we talked about here, but it's a hands-on uh, experience. Uh, if you don't, don't, can't go that route, a lot of your manufacturers do have programs uh, that can, can come in and help you, uh, that will teach you how to use their machine and, uh, and some of the basics of spot welding.